ไว้Hi Joseph. Good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon. Same thing. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm very well. Glad to see you again. Thank Glad you. to see you again. Hope you are staying safe and healthy. So you are working from home now? Uh, no, I come to the office, but not every day. Uh, ah, I, I see. Take, yeah, I will rotate actually. Okay. So yeah. while waiting for more uh, online uh, viewers to join us, so yeah. we will start the section in about two minutes. Sure. Mm. sure. Okay. Mm. Right. So hi, uh, hello everyone. So good afternoon. Welcome to Ken Care Weekly Live Session. So today we are going to talk about the importance of oral hygiene to cancer patients. So we are we have Joseph today. So uh, let's spread to your friend and get them to join us. So we will start in a short while. Okay, we will start our, we can start our session right now. So let, uh, let us welcome Joseph. So he's the director of MBD Marketing Malaysia. And MBD Marketing specializes in bringing innovative oral care, especially like uh, the range of their products, Oral 7, and pharmaceutical products to the pharmaceutical, dental, and OTC industries. A bit background of Joseph, he had worked in a couple of multinational pharmaceutical companies and had experience working with a broad multidisciplinary specialist uh, that is oncologist, cardiologist, dermatologist, and also otolaryngologist. His passion is to assist the cancer patients to manage their side effects during and after uh, treatment. So without further ado, so I will, I will pass over the floor to you, Joseph. You can start sharing on today's topic, the importance of oral hygiene to cancer patients. So for those that actually you all have any question, so this is, this is a, going to be a very interactive section. So feel free to drop your section, uh, questions at the comment section. We will come back to you after Joseph uh, sharing. All right, back to you, Joseph. All right, thank you very much, Tim Teng, and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, first of all, I would like to thank CanCare for inviting me to actually share about the importance of oral hygiene to cancer patients. All right, I will basically start now. I will share on the types of cancer treatment briefly and how the mouth is affected by cancer treatment. Then we will talk on the oral complication of chemotherapy, radiotherapy. We will look also on the importance of saliva as a component in the mouth. And then we will talk on the importance of uh, dental treatment prior, during and after the cancer treatment. And then we will touch on management of uh, so-called management guidance for cancer patients. And the last, part, we will touch on oral seven as the optimal health uh, for oral, uh, I mean, the oral health optimal care. Yeah. Now let's go to type of cancer treatments. We basically have about eight types of cancer treatment. So it depends on your doctor, which type of uh, treatment that your doctor actually want to do looking into your condition. So your doctors, your oncologists will actually share with you what kind of treatment or what kind of process which is the best for you. Then let us look into how the mouth is actually affected by all this cancer treatment. So there are a few ways. One is actually through direct effect of the primary disease. When I say primary disease, meaning to say the disease 
that is in the mouth. Example, if you have oral cancer, that is like the tongue, the slivery gland, or the buccal mucosa. So these are the cancers in the mouth itself. So it will give uh, an effect to your mouth, like basically. Yeah. So next one, you will have on indirect effect of the primary disease. So because of the primary disease, then they will have things like bleeding gums. For leukemia patients, you know, after extraction, they will tend to bleed more. Then you have another one is direct and indirect effect of another coexisting disease. Meaning to say this patient's not only having cancer, but the patient is also having other diseases like diabetes. It can be also stroke, pneumonia, and so on. Now we will look on the side effects of the treatment of the primary disease. So when you treat the cancer itself in the mouth, example, you have, uh, well, I, like I said, oral cancer. Okay, if you treat that, that will also give a side effects directly to the mouth. And you have side effect of treatment on a coexisting disease because the doctor treat your other disease, it will cause some side effects to the mouth as well, or both of them. Well, when your doctor treat your primary disease and your secondary disease, they will actually cause effect to the mouth. These are the incidence of oral damage from cancer treatment. So it depends on which kind of treatment your doctor actually recommends or your doctor prescribes. So if you see here, there are many kinds of modalities. If your doctor is treating you using myelosuppressive chemo drugs, meaning to say it's for the bone marrow. So your effect you know, will be about 50% in terms of the oral damage. Then if this patient or you are having head and neck cancer where the standard treatment is actually giving chemotherapy and radiotherapy, then the side effects can be as high as 97%. And for patients who go for bone marrow transplant, or we call it hematopoietic stem cell transplant, their side effects to the oral cavity can be as high as 98% because they use very high dose of chemo drugs. We will look into the different sites the different places in the mouth that is more prone to damage from anti-cancer treatment. So if you can see here, it's basically the whole mouth, I would say, you know, that are actually affected by the cancer treatment. Now, let us go into more detail, talk about the chemotherapy, how chemotherapy can actually cause oral complication. So what are the common ones? If you look here on the left-hand side, Oral mucositis. Oral mucositis in layman's term, we call it ulcers basically. So ulceration here for cancer patients, it's not just one ulcer itself, but it's multiple. So it can be very painful. Yeah, most of the time it is painful. And then not only that, uh, sometimes it can cause infection as well. Yeah, so we have to be very careful with that. Besides that, because of this ulceration and all, it actually um, cause impaired ability to eat. The patient will feel painful, so they can't actually you know, eat properly. Uh, they find it so difficult, painful. And besides that, from this chemotherapy as well, they will also have problem like swallowing. They can't speak well because of the ulcers and they will have dry mouth. And if you see here, this word trismus, trismus is actually a stiff at the jaw, meaning to say they, they can't actually open their mouth like normal, you know, as big as it should be. So they can only open it, you know, uh, I mean, very small opening, yeah, sometimes so it's so difficult. Then you have infection. They may have viral fungal infection due to all this problem dryness of the mouth due to myelosuppression, which is something to do with your bone marrow, you know, the decrease in production of, uh, you know, uh, bone marrow activity. Therefore, your blood cannot produce, uh, blood cells produce as supposed to be. And then you have all these neutropenia, thrombocytopenia, all this got to do with your blood, your white blood cells, uh, how they actually function and all. So because they can't uh, function well due to the chemotherapy, therefore the infection for this patient can be quite high. And we look at the next one, which is actually zero stoma yeah? or dry mouth in layman's term, we call it. Yeah? So because of the treatment of chemo, it does give a little bit problem of dryness of the mouth as well. 
Okay, we'll go to the next one, alter taste or taste alteration. This is something very common to most cancer patients. They will find that, hey, how come my food suddenly it tastes bland? How come like, you know, it tastes metallic? Yes, because they have a change in taste bud. And then you have nutritional compromise. Of course, because if you can't eat well, you can't drink well, you know, and, and you feel painful and your taste bud change, Obviously, you don't take much food and because of that, you have nutritional compromise. And uh, that is why your doctors or your nurses will actually recommend you to take something like those drinks, uh, milk, basically, you know, take milk supplement to get back your nutrition. Now, the other one is what I put here is graft versus host disease. Graft versus host disease is actually a multi-organ disease that occurs post bone marrow transplant. All right, with mouth being one of the most frequently affected area. Yeah, so we I have a few slides to talk about this, so I will explain to you later. And of course, the other one we have is abnormal dental development, especially for kids below nine years old. If they go for radiation and high dose of chemo, it will actually cause the altered tooth development. So it can be a problem, right? And this can be a long term actually. Okay, let's go to bone marrow transplant. Like I mentioned just now, yeah? chronic graft versus host disease, a multi-organ disease that occurs post bone marrow transplant with the mouth being one of the one most frequently affected. Now, it is a major complication for allergenic transplant. Allergenic, see, uh, for bone marrow transplant, there are two, autologous and allergenic. Autologous meaning to say they take your own blood cells. All right, and then they will do something with it. And then after that, they will give you back your own cells. Uh, allogenic is from somebody else, it's from another donor, yeah? Okay, now chronic graft versus host disease will affect 25 to 80% in long-term survivors. Yeah? And five years rate are as low as 40% for patients with this severe multi-chronic graft versus host disease. So it's something that uh, your oncologist your hematologists especially do not want you to have as far as possible, yeah, because it will affect your survival rate. Yeah. Okay, these are the common signs of oral chronic graft versus host disease. So you can see here the dry mouth, you can see the loss of taste, and then you can see all this, you know, from these pictures, you can see erythema, you can see all this. These are all the medical scientific term, huh? but in short, you can see all the ulceration and all that, yeah. All right, let us look into the common oral complication with regards to radiotherapy. Yeah. Now, basically, it's almost the same with chemotherapy, except for a few things. Yeah. So you can see these slides, they are the same as chemotherapy, so I will not repeat them. But what I want to show you here is the other one which you don't find in chemotherapy is radiation carries. So radiation carries is a lifelong risk of rampant dental decay. So it will, you know, it may occur after your treatment. So that is why for dental, uh, so-called hygiene, oral hygiene, after your cancer treatment, it's very, very important. Yeah, and sadly, uh, not many people actually bothers about it. They thought when they finish their cancer treatment, that's it, you know, so they don't bother so much. But it can be quite bad, you know, to your, uh, what you call that your oral mucosa later. Now, the other one which is different found in all uh, radiotherapy, uh, what you call that side effects is actually trismus, yeah, which I mentioned earlier. Yeah, so they can't actually move, uh, open their mouth, the jaw, you know, they, they, the muscle is actually like tight or stiff. Okay, and the last one is osteonecrosis. Osteonecrosis is basically uh, necrosis is actually the date. You know, it's like a, what we call it a, a death to the tissue. That means it usually affect the jaw. So because of radiation, um, the tissues near the jaw there, uh, basically, you know, because there's no blood uh, vessels, uh, they are dead. So that causes the necrosis. Yeah, and uh, it, it's quite uh, what you call it's quite a problem, especially you know when they go for any so called. Uh, operation, surgery, or whatever. It, it can be quite risky, yeah? So this is another one. Now, let us look into why is saliva an important component in the mouth, yeah? Because like I mentioned earlier, dry mouth or xerostomia is one of the big 
problem for cancer patients, especially those who have head and neck cancer. Yeah. So why is it so important? Let's look into the importance of saliva. Number one, it is something that has antimicrobial defense, meaning to say it has antiviral, antifungal, antibacterial. So it helps to prevent us from getting infection. Yeah, so that is so important yeah, in the mouth. Besides that, of course, like I say, it maintains the optimal oral health. Yeah, it helps to balance, which here it will show you as well. It helps to facilitate speech. Because if I don't have enough saliva, if anybody who do not have enough saliva, it's difficult for them to actually talk. Because when they talk, their tongue is like, you know, it's, it's going to stuck to the palate, like there's no lubrication. Yeah. And then we talk about, yeah, I just mentioned about lubrication yeah, of the oral mucosa. Uh, we talk about also the next one, chewing or mastication, you call it. Without saliva or lack of saliva, you will find it very, very difficult to actually eat, uh, to chew. Just like very commonly, uh, you know, when we have cough and cold, all right, we take certain drugs like antihistamines, it does cause dryness also. And then we tend to eat something and then we find it so difficult. We need to have something which is like soup to go with it or something gravy to actually go with it. Yeah. Then we have also the importance of saliva in terms of taste perception. Yeah. So now you know why the cancer uh, patients actually have a taste, uh, taste bud change because of the, uh, what do you call that? Insufficient of saliva. That's one of them. Yeah? And then facilitate digestive action helps in swallowing and also buffering action. That means it neutralizes, it doesn't cause your mouth to be too acidic or too alkaline. You know? So that is why it is so important to have enough sufficient saliva. Okay, So obviously the saliva comes from our salivary gland. Anything that happened to it will cause the decrease in production. Okay, Dry mouth in medical term, like I mentioned earlier, zero stomia. So what causes dry mouth? or zero stomia. Medication. We have documented about, I think, uh, 600 over kind of medication that cause dryness of the mouth. So it depends which kind of medication that you're using. And obviously, chemotherapy drugs are one of them. Now, scientific studies, clinical studies shows that the more medication somebody takes, the higher the incidence of dryness of the mouth. Now, sad to say, cancer patients, uh, majority of them, you know, when they go for treatment for their cancer, they not only have cancer by itself, they most of the time will have other secondary disease. Like I mentioned earlier, diabetes, hypertension, some even have kidney problem as well. Yeah, so therefore they need to take more medication. The other one is yeah, chemotherapy. Now, chemotherapy changes, yeah, the drugs change the nature of saliva and the amount that is produced. So it can be temporary. So when you stop it, when you stop taking the chemo drugs, then you will actually get back your saliva. Uh, the severity will depend on how much or how high the dose that your oncologist prescribed. Yeah. Now, radiotherapy. Yeah, radiotherapy, it's slightly different compared to chemotherapy in the sense that radiotherapy, especially for the head and neck, uh, it is a permanent problem, yeah, in a way, because uh, you look at this third point here, doctors usually prescribe 60 to 70 gray, which is actually the measurement for the radiation, uh, to treat cancers, okay, to treat the tumors. So most of the time it's 60 to 70 gray, but by giving 25 to 30 gray is enough to damage the salivary glands permanently. So that's why you see uh, most of the head and neck cancer patients will 100% have a problem of dryness of the mouth. Yeah, because uh, this area is exactly where the salivary gland is situated. So that's why it is spoiled, yeah. The other reason is, of course, aging. Yeah, many people, you know, older people, they will experience dry mouth as they age because one is, yeah, they use multiple medication. Secondly, changes in the body's ability to process the medication. It may be slower. Yeah? And inadequate nutrition. 
and long-term health problem. So all this adds up, yeah, all this adds up to their uh, problem of having dryness of the mouth. Now, if anyone were to have other health medical conditions, like they may have things like Alzheimer, they may be a stroke victim before, they may be a diabetic patient, they may uh, be a patient, uh, we call it uh, with Jogren syndrome, which is an autoimmune disease. Now, all this will actually cause dryness of the mouth as well. Yeah? One is the condition itself. Secondly, is the drugs that they take. And of course, the other one will be nerve damage. Anything that, you know, uh, if you go for surgery or trauma, accident, something that is near the nerve, near to the salivary gland, it will cause dryness. Yeah? And lastly, you know, is your lifestyle. If a person were to smoke, uh, take uh, you know, alcohol and some even recreational drugs, this will also cause some degree of dryness of the mouth. Okay? So what are the signs and symptoms? Now, some of you, the cancer patients may actually go through this, yeah? which is you have sticky burning feeling in the mouth and then you have difficulty in chewing, difficulty in swallowing and speaking. Then your mouth may actually have an odor. Yeah, we call it halitosis. And you have a change in taste bud, like I mentioned earlier. Your throat is dry, sore, and you have a hoarseness of voice, dry, rough, and painful tongue. Yeah, and you also most of the time have a lot of periodontitis, which is a periodontal problem, a uh, disease. And then you have inflammation of your gums, bleeding gums, and frequently, you know, you got to wake up at night to drink water, yeah, which is common because most of the time we sleep, we feel thirsty, yeah. And saliva is very uh, thick, foamy, stringy, and then dentures, yeah, dentures is something very common, yeah, which uh, most of these cancer patients, they, they, they need to change it pretty frequently because when you have dryness, your gums actually recede. So uh, it doesn't fit well, your dentures doesn't fit well anymore. So you, you got to change it quite frequently yeah and the other one for ladies of course they have lipstick sticking to the teeth now these are some of the pictures that i prepared for you you can see dry tongue very inflamed gums yeah and this is multiple uh, ulcers or mucositis and you can see this person with a stringy uh, what we call the saliva uh, or ropey saliva you call it sometimes you will see some uh, patients they actually have saliva thick mucus actually at the site at the side of their mouth here, yeah? So these are what we call ropey saliva. Then oral trash, then you have periodontal gum disease, you have tooth decay, which is very common, and then you have gingival disquamation, yeah? all this, okay? Now, let me go to the next one, the importance of dental care prior, during, and after. Okay, so I have talked actually on uh, one, what are the so-called side effects of chemo, radiation, therapy, and then I've also talked about um, how important it is to have the saliva component in the mouth, all right? Now, let us look into the next important point, which we are talking about today is that the dental care, all right? I'm, go I'm touching on three points, which is prior, during, and after. Yeah, so prior, before you go for cancer treatment, usually what your doctor will do is that your oncologist will send you to the dentist to do a oral clearance or oral hygiene, meaning to say to look at you to make sure everything is okay before the, they start the treatment for you. Yeah, whether it is chemo, whether it is radiotherapy. Now, why it is important? Now, ideally, it should take place one month before cancer treatment start so that you have adequate time for recovery from any required invasive dental procedure. So it depends sometimes because it like, I mean, you know, emergency that the doctor have to do it quite fast. So it may not be one month, huh? it may be lesser than a month, but ideally should be one month. It helps to reduce the risk and severity of oral complications later, yeah? whether it is during the treatment or after the treatment. And then it allows for prompt identification and treatment of existing infection or other problems. Meaning to say, when the dental surgeons or the dentist check 
and see that something is not right. If your tooth, for example, like it's loosened, decay, they need to actually do something, they will do something about it. So that before you start your cancer treatment, they will actually do all this for you. Yeah. Improve the likelihood. Uh, this is very important, ladies and gentlemen. Improve the likelihood that the patient will successfully complete the planned cancer treatment. Uh, this is very important. Okay. It can help the patient, the cancer patient, to continue their treatment without actually stopping halfway. Yeah. And prevents, eliminate all or reduce the oral pain. If you have any pain due to ulcers, and uh, the doctors can actually help you prescribe some of the medicine for you, uh, the pain management medicine. That you will minimize uh, oral infection that could lead to potential serious systemic infection. Systemic infection means, you know, through the mouth, it will have another infection. It may go to your lungs and then it will cause things like pneumonia. It can also, in, uh, what do you call that, affect your blood as well. Yeah. So if you are not careful. Prevents and minimize complications that compromise nutrition. Yeah, so these are the thing. Prevent and reduce later incidence of bone necrosis. Okay. Now, the other one, preserve and improve your oral, oral health, provides opportunity for patients, education. So the dentist will tell you how to go about when you have side effects. Uh, they will actually give you a lot of advice. So by doing all this, it will improve your quality of life. And obviously, when you don't have to be admitted to the hospital, where you don't have to go and see the doctor so frequently, definitely it will save the hospital costs. Yeah. Okay. Let's look into during. Okay. Now, during these are the time where you will actually experience all the side effects and all that. So the dental treatment is necessary. You, the dentist, must consult your oncologist before any dental procedure. So meaning to say, once the cancer treatment starts, your dentist, they cannot simply do any procedure. They must actually consult your oncologist first if they need to do any dental procedure. Yeah. Now, it is advised that if oral surgery is required, must allow this patient to basically stop what we call the chemo drugs for at least seven to 10 days, uh, because otherwise it will affect, you know, the dental procedure when they actually do extraction and all that, it will cause the bleeding, you know, to be continuous and difficult to stop and so on. So a lot of complication. Yeah? And uh, elective surgery is advised during your cancer treatment. If you have any elective surgery, meaning to say it's not emergency, postpone it. Provide recommendation for treating dry mouth. Yeah, like I said, yeah, during the treatment, if you have any problem with dry mouth, the dentist will actually advise you what to do. Then the dentist will also review your oral hygiene and prescribe some antimicrobial therapy, those uh, antifungal, antiviral, antibacterial you know, products if you need to. Then provide topical anesthesia. This is for pain management. Yeah, And uh, eliminate all your soft tissue inflammation and all. Okay. Now, this part, when it comes to after, sadly, a lot of people don't actually pay emphasis to it, don't actually bother about it. They thought when they have finished their cancer treatment, oh, that's it, I finished and my doctor say that now I'm uh, cancer-free, you know, so that's it, you know, and I don't have to do anything. Actually, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's not correct, you know. Um, after cancer therapy, it's very important for you to take care of your oral hygiene. Right, so it is recommended that you must have frequent oral evaluation with the dentist. So, for the first six months after your cancer therapy, you must go and visit your dentist every month or every two months. Visit them so that they can have a thorough check and see that everything is okay. Yeah, and if there's something wrong, they will actually tell you what to do or whether should you go back to see the oncologist. Right. And then patients should avoid invasive surgical procedures, including extractions that would, you know, that involve irradiated bones, eh? especially like I said, osteonecrosis. Yeah. So at the jaw there, you know, if if can, you know, this procedure can be so-called uh, postponed or don't have to do it, then you don't do it. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, it can have a problem uh, because of the 
uh, radiation, the side effect, it causes the necrosis, all your tissues here to die, you know, so it is quite difficult. And then lifelong daily fluoride application, or meaning to say you have to continue to make sure that you use uh, toothpaste with fluoride, you have the fluoride to protect your enamel, you know, whatever teeth that you still left with, you know, it's very important to have that. Yeah? And then it can help you in terms of your, you know, um, good nutrition. You can continue taking good nutrition. Doctors will advise you what to do. Yeah? If you have slightly dysfunction, you have dry mouth, doctor will tell you, okay, what should you take? How can you overcome the dryness of the mouth? Dentures, yeah, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, dentures is something like I have uh, many, you know, uh, cancer patients who have become my friends now. Yeah, they tell me, you know, after the cancer therapy is that denture is one of the problem for them. They, they need to change like, you know, every three months, every four months, they need to change new one uh, because they have dryness, receding gums and all that. So it doesn't fit well. So they need to change it. Yeah, so this is the thing when you see the dentist, you can also tell them, right? And then of course, children, uh, we have to observe children, those who have uh, after treatment, see whether they have any abnormal growth or not. Yeah. Okay, and then dentists should check well whether there's any recurrence, especially if you're talking about head and neck cancer patients, yeah? whether there's any uh, recurrence of the cancer. Okay, so it's very, very important. All right. Now I'll go to the next one, which is actually uh, on the do's and don'ts for cancer patients. Right. Now let's go into the do's first. Right. Here I would recommend all the patients to actually use extra soft or sometimes you call it ultra soft or super soft bristle toothbrush okay uh, you may actually soften the bristle by putting it into warm water yes yeah? so it can actually soften it now even for you know people like us who are not cancer patients we are actually encouraged to use soft toothbrush not you know, medium, not hard, especially not the hard one. Because our teeth is not like the floor where you actually scrub it so hard. You know, a lot of people do not know. They, they thought the harder they brush, the harder they, you know, brush it, it will be cleaner. Actually, that's not true. You actually spoil your, you know, gums and all that. Yeah. Okay. Now, second one, change of, obviously change your toothpaste. Uh, sorry, your change your toothbrush uh, three, you know, three months once or if you see that the, the, the shape of the bristle is already you know out of shape then change it yeah and uh, floss gently at least once a day now uh, you have to be very careful for those patients when they have low uh, very low blood count uh, they should be very careful because when they floss it may actually cause bleeding yeah so then they should stop doing that okay uh, use very low foaming fluoride toothpaste do not use those toothpaste which has a lot of foam, very harsh, yeah? because those foams uh, are actually what we call soap. Yeah? They are detergent. So uh, for cancer patients, especially uh, when you're going for treatment, uh, it can be you know, very painful, uh, stinging when you use uh, you know, this kind of toothpaste, especially when you have multiple uh, ulcers, yeah? you feel painful. So when you feel painful, you don't brush, now, where are you going to get your fluoride then? Yeah, you don't brush, so you can't clean it well. Okay, so look for toothpaste which has very low foam or no foam at all. Yeah, okay, next one uh, brush teeth after every meal, right? You should do that, or at least twice a day. Yeah, that's what we should do at least twice a day. Yeah, then number six, rinse your mouth with alcohol free mouthwash. It is very important to actually use alcohol free mouthwash. Yeah. Do not use a uh, mouthwash with alcohol, right? Because it's drying, yeah, it's not uh, suitable for patients. Mm. Seven, now, if a patient having dryness of the mouth, what they can do, uh, sip water frequently. You can carry a bottle of water with you and sip frequently, right? So whenever you feel thirsty, you just sip it, or you can actually, uh, you know, I, I will show you afterwards when it comes to the Oral 7 uh, product, how you can actually help by actually, uh, what you call carrying the spray bottle with you, yeah? Number two, 7.2, you suck ice chips uh, or use sugar-free gums or candy. Yeah? It must be sugar-free, right? And then 7.3, you can use saliva substitute spray or gel, 
uh, or prescribed by the uh, sorry or prescribed uh, stimulant uh, saliva stimulant by your doctors apply lip lubricant or lip balm they call it but you make sure that this lip balm are not you know uh, petroleum based because uh, you know it has been shown that petroleum based uh, products can actually cause infection so be very careful about that yeah and uh, if the air is dry so use humidifier or a vaporizer at night yeah? so that will in a way help you with uh, your dryness okay for patient you feel more cooling you won't feel that uh, dry okay number eight influence uh, sorry increase your fluid intake so uh, for patients on dialysis uh, you should consult your physician on that huh? because patient on dialysis they have a restriction it comes to a uh, fluid right uh, number nine fluid uh, sorry include foods high in protein in diet yeah so this is something that you must think about and uh, let food cool to room temperature yes do not take your food when it is uh, hot you know uh, it, it can cause burning and all that yeah? and especially when you have inflammation all that yeah? it can be very painful now 11 moisten your food with gravy yeah it's because difficult to swallow so you can actually you know add in gravy uh, for some people who maybe like soup better yeah they can go along with soup that will help them and number 12 yeah do take puree food uh, like porridge and all that or try soft food like macaroni cheese and cheese stews mashed potatoes soups scrambled eggs cottage cheese so these are some of those uh, things that you can actually uh, eat that will actually help you yeah for these uh, patients okay let's go to the don'ts now for the don'ts is that avoid yeah using a medium and hard bristle toothbrush which i mentioned earlier and then avoid using lemon and glycerin swab yeah because they are acidic so it will actually cause a problem to you yeah avoid rinsing your mouth with alcohol based mouthwash avoid using water pick during treatment water pick is like those uh, uh water pick is like those jet something like that you know it's a jet water pick in a uh, they, they actually use it instead of flossing they actually use that so uh, avoid using that especially during treatment yeah because it may injure your mucosa uh, injure your gums and all that so be very careful with that uh, number five avoid hard brushing like i've mentioned earlier avoid using harsh very foamy toothpaste i mentioned and also please please uh, do not use the whitening toothpaste uh, uh, just remember that okay because they are very abrasive erosive so it can actually damage your not only your teeth but your mucosa right then number seven uh, avoid candy gum sodas you know unless they are sugar free eight avoid petroleum based product like i mentioned earlier because it, they can promote infection uh, number nine avoid salty hot spicy acidic and rough dry foods number 10 obviously this is something that you must do that is avoid smoking alcohol intake yeah because studies have shown that you know smoking interferes with some chemotherapy treatments it can slow down the recovery and can cause reversing head and neck cancers yeah so it's a no-no so you must observe uh, smoking gestation yeah stop that okay so these are uh, this slide is just to show you you know if you have these side effects uh, what you should do like loss of taste you know like i mentioned earlier your taste bud change right so what can i do well unfortunately nothing much you can do about it uh, you know when you stop treatment it will come back uh, it will come back so that's what yeah what to avoid yeah you're supposed to avoid all the sweet food drinks uh, a great temptation at this time but if taken between meals or before bedtime you will rapidly get tooth decay yeah? so like i mentioned all the sweetened food and all that avoid it if you have difficulty in swallowing you know what happens you have dryness soreness your mouth you know make it very difficult to swallow uh, you can rinse your mouth with uh, uh, or gargle your mouth with this product called Diflam uh, because they have an analgesic they have a pain uh, uh, so-called a pain relief uh, compound inside so it can actually help you in your pain management um, there are uh, doctors you know they actually uh, prescribe both 
two types of uh, mouthwash. One is like, for example, Viflam. The other one, they actually pro, uh, provide uh, them, the patient with uh, Oral 7. Yeah, because uh, Diflam will just numb the pain, but Oral 7 can actually help to heal the ulcers and uh, moisture to make the, uh, the patients more uh, comfortable. Then alcohol will increase mouth dryness. That's why I said do not use alcohol-based product. If you have jaw stiffness, this is what you can do. Exercise, you know, basically exercise your jaw at least three times a day. Uh, just move your jaw up, down, left, right. This is what you can do. Uh, dry mouth, yeah, these are the things that you can do. Sip water, uh, chew sugar-free uh, gum. And then you can apply all these uh, saliva substitute gel and whatnot. All right. So this is what you can do. Avoid acidic food. Sore mouth is almost the same as dry mouth as well. Yeah. So avoid all the alcohol, tobacco, and all that. Uh, loss of weight. Yeah. Because you may not have appetite and all. So what you can do is that you know eat high energy food. And then uh, arrange for you to see a dietitian. Yeah, you can actually go and see a dietitian. Now, there's one more thing is that uh, if you can't eat your meal like you know uh, so much, uh, such a big portion like normal before you actually go for treatment, uh, try to actually smaller the portion of your meal, but you eat more frequently. Yeah, so that's one way to help it. Yeah, and difficulty with dentures, of course, you need to go and see the dentist and uh, seek the dentist advice what to do. You know and all that all right and then then just you need to actually soak it properly clean it yeah okay let's go to the last one last portion uh where we will talk about you know very uh quickly i will talk about in five minutes time i will talk about this uh, oral seven how it can help in terms of uh, optimal oral health yeah now oral seven is a natural enzyme product okay uh it's what you call the ingredients are the same as what is found in the saliva, right? It assists the function of healthy saliva and it helps to keep the mouth moist and balanced. These are the slivery constitu uh, sorry, these are the active ingredients found in uh, oral 7 where we have the lactoproxidase, lysozyme, lactoferrin, glucose oxidase. Don't worry about the scientific name, right? Basically, these are all the enzymes, we call it the protein enzymes found in our human saliva that gives the antimicrobial properties, which are the antiviral, antifungal, and antibacterial. Okay, so Oral 7 is the only product in the market that has this enzyme similar with what is found in our saliva to protect us against all the germs. And besides that, we put things like aloe vera. Why do we put it aloe vera? Because the aloe vera will help to actually moisture. Well, aloe vera will help to heal the ulcers, heal the wound, and basically it is for inflammation as well. Yeah. And we also put in fluoride. Fluoride is important, like I mentioned earlier, yeah, to prevent tooth decay and also to actually, you know, to the, the, the balance the pH and, and all this, the calcium and all that, huh? strengthen. And then after that, we have calcium, we have sorbitol, we have xylitol. Sorbitol and xylitol are natural sweeteners. Yep, they are from fruits and plants. So they are not like those processed sugar. So oral 7 have no problem for diabetic patients. They can actually use it. Right. How does oral 7 actually help? Now, when a patient has xerostomia or dry mouth, their saliva reduced, therefore their enzymes also reduce. Yeah. So because of that, they tend to get a lot of infection, right? This is what we call the pathogenic, yeah? And what they do is that when they use Oral 7, Oral 7 has all this enzyme that gives the antiviral, antifungal, and antibacterial properties. So Oral 7 will do what? It will reduce the harmful bacteria and it will sustain the beneficial bacteria. Now, I want to let you know, ladies and gentlemen, is that in medical science, um, you cannot actually uh, do away with all the bacteria. Because in medical science, uh, there is a word called uh, flora, meaning to say you must have good and bad, the balance of good and bad bacteria in our body. So the bad ones, so-called bad ones, will have their function. You know, they have their function of what to do. So it's a balance, okay? And from there, you will have healthy and balanced oral flora. Now, 
Oral 7 toothpaste, why is special? The enzymes. Besides that, flor we have fluoride, calcium, aloe vera, xylitol. Now, what we do not put inside is actually the SLS, sodium lauryl sulfate. Like I mentioned, it is a detergent. Now, SLS, in short, sodium lauryl sulfate is found in your hair shampoo and body shampoo. That's the one that you know causes the foam. Clinical studies have found that this, okay, especially can cause recurrent of ulcers, recurrent of uh, mucositis. For patients, especially, it have their very sensitive uh, mucosa lining in the mouth. Like example, the cancer patients, yeah, they will tend to have recurrent. So that's why the cancer patients, when they are going for treatment, during treatment, if they use very foamy toothpaste, their ulcers will not go away so immediately. It will not go away. It will keep on coming back. You know, before one heals, another one occurs. So that's why we tell them, you know, especially during treatment, do not use foamy toothpaste. Yeah, go for non-foamy or very, very low foam toothpaste. Yeah, that's what you can do. And indication, these are the indication for the oral seven toothpaste, you know, maintain good health. And then people with dry mouth, people with ulcers, people with bleeding gums, bad breath and all that. Now, oral seven can be used for anybody at all. Huh? It's not only cancer patients. Huh? This is something that I want to emphasize. You and I, without cancer, we can use it, but it is very, very, very suitable for cancer patients. Yeah? Very safe. How to use it? Yeah, very simple. Just ask them to change their toothpaste with oral seven toothpaste, brush after every meal or brush at least twice a day. Yeah. Now we go to the next one, our moisturizing mouthwash. With all the enzymes, with calcium, with xylitol, with aloe vera, with natural peppermint, which is refreshing, no alcohol. All right, there is no alcohol in oral seven mouthwash because the alcohol actually have a burning sensation, stinging sensation. And not only that, you know, alcohol is uh, drying. Yeah, so this oral seven does not dry. Yeah, it's non drying. Okay. And uh, the indication for the mouthwash, yeah. For all these people who have a problem, dryness, uh, infection, bad breath, periodontal disease, you know, after surgery, they can actually use it. Now, you and I can use it as our oral hygiene every day. Yeah, so no worries at all. all right. Now, instruction to use, there are a few ways. One is you ask them to, you know, you pour into one tablespoon, uh, about 15 ml, and you actually gargle it. All right, you gargle, you switch in your mouth for 30 seconds and you speed up. Now, for patients who have very uh, uh, sore throat, you know, very inflamed throat, sore throat due to the radiation, they can actually take another spoon and slowly sip it in. Okay, they can actually sip it in one tablespoon four times a day if they need to, huh? because they have very bad sore throat, bad inflamed throat, so they can actually do that. Now, if you only use it for your mouth just to gargle as your oral hygiene, you don't need to actually sip it in. Yeah? Another way of using is put it in the spray bottle. If you can see, I'm showing you the spray bottle here. You can put it into the spray bottle, all right? And you can spray, you know, three, pour, three or four puffs. Just spray three or four puffs each time and swallow it. It's ingestible. Now, we have some uh, pediatricians who actually use the same way, same method to actually manage hand foot mouth disease for children because it is very safe. Oral 7 is safe to be swallowed and we have the antiviral as well. We have aloe vera there to actually heal the ulcers very fast. Yeah? So this is what they can do. All right. Now, the last one we have is actually the gel. The gel with all the same ingredient, xylitol, aloe vera, all the enzymes, it provides a longer lasting effect because it is gel, so it is uh, thicker in terms of viscosity. So it will stay in the mouth longer, right? So what indication, these are all the indication for people with all this problem, kneel by mouth patient, meaning to say uh, they're not supposed to take any food, yeah, they're in the ward, not supposed to take any food, they can obviously it will be dry and all that. And then you have uh, people who have difficulty in swallowing. Yeah, uh, we call it, in medical term, we call it uh, dysphagia, uh, difficulty in swallowing and all, yeah, speaking. Right. How to use it? Uh, they can apply, squeeze about one to two cm. 
if they can use their tip of the tongue, put it at the tip of the tongue, and they actually, uh, what you call that, uh, switch all over the mouth. Yeah, all over the mouth. If they can't do it because it's too painful, the mouth is so inflamed, then they have no choice. They wash their hands, then they put about one or two cm and apply into the mouth. Now, make sure, ladies and gentlemen, you have to apply all over the mouth. Do not just put it to your lips, but you have to put it inside your inner cheek, your palate, you know, your gums, your tongue, everywhere, in other words. Yeah? So you've got to do that. And uh, the other th way is that you can actually also squeeze it from the tube itself. Okay? This is your own tube. So you can squeeze the amount that you want, right? and then you put it, you just do this and swallow. That's another way of using it. Yeah? Now, for patients who have very dry tongue, they have difficulty in swallowing, uh, difficulty in chewing, what they can do is that they apply before they eat. Apply first, moist it, and then after that, they go and have their meal. Obviously, after the meal, they need to reapply because when you eat, you actually wash away the gel. Yeah. Now, one thing I want to highlight to you is that for cancer patients, uh, whatever gel that you put into the mouth, it will feel sticky. So you need to actually spray. Yeah. Spray this, it will actually make it more moist. Yeah. You'll feel more. Uh, what you call it, palatable. And you can use it as frequent as possible. Yeah? Our product is also certified halal. So for our Muslim uh, brothers and sisters, Muslim friends, don't have to worry. It's certified halal. Our product is made in UK. It's certified halal by this Islamic body and endorsed by Jakim. Okay? So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. All right? Thank you, Joseph. So, uh, for explaining the importance of oral hygiene to cancer patients to us in very details. So, we there are a few questions from the uh, viewers. So, the first one uh, from Miss Crystal. So, you have mentioned uh, you mentioned just now we are uh, uh, encouraged advisable to use the ultra soft Bristol uh, toothbrush. So she asked, how about automatic toothbrush? Will it be better? Okay. Uh, well, I mean, a good question. For, for cancer patient, uh, I think for cancer patient is not really... Uh, because the electronic toothbrush, they have different speed. Okay? They have different mm -hmm. speed. Yeah? So uh, for electronic toothbrush, the Bristol may be a bit hard for these patients, cancer patients, especially when they are going for treatment. So it may actually cause some injury to them. But if you are talking for just mm. like normal people, not cancer patients, oh, it's fine. Mm, mm. Because uh, the electronic toothbrush has been proven to be uh, effective and even better for, you know, compared to normal toothbrush. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Joseph. Then, uh, and one another question. So, how soon is advisable to start oral gaga for cancer patient? Is it before treatment or during treatment? Now, uh, well, we we actually tell the uh, dentist and the oncologist to advise the cancer patient. One is we have to understand that cancer patients are immunocompromised. Immunocompromised means to say their immune system is low. And that is part of the reason why they actually get uh, cancer, you know? Yeah, so that's the thing. Mm. Uh, we always tell the uh, dentist, when the patient goes to them for oral clearance, oral preparation, oral treatment prior to their cancer treatment, uh, after doing that, they should start using oral 7 toothpaste. Because oral 7 toothpaste do not have all this foam, all right? Mm. But it has all this enzyme and moisturizing and it will help to enhance their immune, their oral immune system. And they can actually use the mouthwash. In fact, the mouthwash, you don't have to use it only when you go for cancer treatment. You see, the mouthwash, you can use it even before. So I would say, mm. when you go and see the dentist for your oral clearance or oral treatment mm. for your cancer treatment, start using it already. Mm. Okay, And you can continue using it during treatment and even after treatment. Right. Okay. Now, just to add mm. for the gel, mm. right, the mouth gel, uh, you use it 
only when you start to feel you have the inflammation in your mouth, when you have the dryness and the outside. Okay, so you don't have to use it before. All right, so you can use it during when you start to have it. Usually the ulcers will occur maybe the second week or the third week, especially for radi radiation patients. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Okay, thanks Joseph. Yeah. So uh, let me check, is there any more questions? Okay, one more. How to get rid of halitosis with oral gargle? Oh, okay. Now, first thing is, uh, you should not be using, should not be using alcohol-based mouthwash. All right, because uh, halitosis, there are many reasons why people get bad breath. All right, halitosis. One is of course the imbalance, uh, your pH. You know your pH. All right. Yeah. Second one is of course people say you know because of what you eat, you eat things like garlic and all these things. Of course, it will also. Mm cause it. Sometimes you have people say your gut may have some problem. Now, having said that, if everything is alright, it's just that your mouth dryness is one of the reasons. The other one is when you have tooth decay. Okay, when you have tooth decay, that also would have to cause all this. Yeah? So, go uh, use mouthwash, which is non-alcohol. That will actually mm. help you. Yeah, that will help you. Alright? Okay, thanks. So, uh, thank you so much, Joseph. And uh, just a wrap up. So it is important to maintain good oral hygiene, oral care throughout the cancer treatment and beyond. So mouth, we because cancer treatment can cause sores in the mouth and through as well as the dryness, serostomia that uh, Joseph mentioned, irritation or bleeding. So practice good oral hygiene. And if you're, you are experiencing any symptom, you can actually uh, tell your doctors and to get, uh, get treatment to solve the, your problem. So for all the seven range of products, you may also get it from our CanCare outlet and also our online, online store. So thank you so much, Joseph. Wish you have a great weekend. And to all the viewers, thanks for joining us today. Have a great day. See you all next week for our next uh, Facebook Live section. Stay safe and take care. Thank you very much.